Uh, hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Uh, my name is Sung Park. These are my qualifications. And here's my weekly update. I'm just going to share my screen. All right. So uh, for this week uh, at Picto, the updates are uh, there's a few infographic updates. Uh, there's also uh, some dog food where I've uh, been using my own product at Picto to uh, uh, create slides for my class, as well as some of the bugs that I found. So I guess the first is the uh, Picto infographic updates. So here is the updates. So right now we have the infographic with this list of icons, which I think I showed last time. So you could search for car, for example, and see different options for cars. Let's choose that one. That looks pretty good. And so uh, now we have a, a basic editor. Uh, it's obviously far from finished, but we have the basics of the user interface there. Uh, you'll see some options for styles. This is going to be how uh, the infographics gets filled up. We also have options for, so these are the bar pie, and then we also have outline pie, uh, as well as reverse pie. Uh, the other thing that we have working is the total number of icons of the default. So currently it's set to one, but you could set it to 10. And you can also change the default color to, let's say, oh, I don't know, blue. So that's fun. And then uh, eventually uh, we'll have the directions, the uh, uh, unit per icon, and this uh, the actual data working. But right now you can't enter something in just as a placeholder, like so. And you'll see that there is now five uh, columns of icons and 10 uh, rows uh, as well. So if I were to change this to, let's say, oh, five, now it's five and five, if I did seven, uh, five and seven. So it's slowly getting there. Uh, so that's the updates. So the next things that we're gonna be working on is the actual fill uh, and as well as the data inputs. Uh, so yeah, wish us luck. All right, so that's the update on the infographics. Now let's talk about dog food. Uh, here is the slides that I created for class. So this is for uh, a global business, uh, 5310 for Seattle University. And as you can see, these are the slides that I created for a presentation that myself and my partner from class will be giving. It's around marketing and advertising in the global context. Um, these are just uh, the images that I created, assets that I created. Uh, and you can see that I used uh, Ad Picto for these uh, assets. So if I were to say edit selected Picto, you'll see that the shape and the image right here. And some of the other things that I created were these uh, circles. Again, if I were to go back and say uh, it is selected, you'll see that uh, the shape that I used, as well as the color, and then the image that I used. Um, another one that I created, again, these are just basic uh, uh, masked shapes, uh, photo images and shapes. And then this uh, uh, map uh, graphic was something that I just found. And yeah, so a lot of it is just um, you know inserting um, uh, images into shapes. And then this is uh, something that I actually uh, fudged. So I essentially put this animation on top of this shape. Uh, so this is something that I would like to, uh, in the future, implement is to support animated GIFs. I don't know if uh, Google's API will support that or not. We'll see. Uh, and then as you can see, these are just uh, other things that I've made for the slides. And I think uh, these look great. And again, uh, these are just shapes. If I go again here and say edit, like so, you'll see that the shape and the image are all from uh, Ad Picto. And again, you can kind of see the patterns now. Uh, so for uh, these things, all I did was uh, added the shapes with the image and then used the little uh, line tool with the arrow uh, to create the little arrows. And if you're curious as to what the um, uh, presentation about, is about, again, these are just uh, uh, various frameworks that you should consider if you're considering expanding globally. And it talks about uh, the different methods and strategies when doing so, as well as a cage method. Uh, and then uh, it, there's a little break where it talks about like, hey, from paper, this is what it should be. Uh, but that, uh, you know, just because it looks good on paper doesn't necessarily mean that that's what you should do. And then the second portion is about um, how marketing analysis or marketing uh, it should impact the decision of going uh, uh, globally or not and, and uh, determining which uh, markets to enter, the notion of uh, the importance of segmentation and the different marketing strategy and the marketing mix. And again, all of these were created using Ad Picto to just kind of illustrate 
uh, the points. Like so. So this one is about product, about how different uh, cultures have different uh, needs for the exact same product uh, based upon cultural differences. Uh, the notion about like price and how that's impacted by uh, if you have just uh, customization or not. So, you know, the example here just sodas and about how if you have just one soda uh, with different branding or, or, you know, different labeling, uh, it'll be a lot cheaper. So you can benefit from the economies of scale versus if we try to be uh, more responsive to the, to the localness or the various countries you're trying to enter, they may end up costing you more because again, you have to do more personalization uh, for the actual product itself and the advertising and just about the place. Uh, and then of course, marketing mix. Uh, I thought this was, or promotion. I thought this was an interesting one in that uh, these are both advertising for Maybelline. Uh, one is based in the US and the other in China. And that the notion that based upon the, uh, the, the, the markets, uh, you know, the sense of beauty is different. Uh, and you know, this is just one example, but obviously there's a lot of different factors uh, that, that are different uh, between countries that you should consider. And then also just the notion that it's a, it should be a loop and that you know, uh, marketing analysis should impact global strategy and that you know, going down the funnel here and that ultimately whatever the results are should be then taken and reapplied uh, to all the various steps. And that's it. Uh, so that was a dog food. All right, let's talk about some uh, bugs. So these are the bugs that we found. Uh, some are good, some are bad. Actually, they're all bad. So I'm going to do the launch of the current uh, live uh, ad pick though. So the first thing that I found that was kind of a bummer is the low resolution. So if I were to just do this, yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to flip it. Great. And I'm going to then insert the, the picto. And so what I discovered is, is that we're uh, requesting images from Unsplash that are uh, a lower resolution to try to increase the speed of a performance, but in, in exchange, when I now increase the size of this thing, you see on the edge here, as well as the actual image itself, it's very pixelated. So that's not good. So that's bug number one. Uh, number two is it adds uh, random spaces. Um, I think this would be better illustrated using a different shape. Let's use this one and let's use dogs because why not? And let's say I want this little booger here. So let's say uh, that I wanted to you know, make the, the, the image of this dog a little bigger. So I could click on this little icon and now change the size to let's say 120. Uh, not bad, let's do 140. Great. And then I'm gonna also say, I want it to be aligned here, the bottom. Uh, maybe that's too big, 130. Perfect. Let's say I'm happy with that. And so now I'm just gonna insert uh, that mass image, insert that pic though. And so what it does is if you click this here, you'll see that there's this added space on the top. And just to give you kind of a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison, I'm gonna set this image to 100 and say, insert. Oh, oh that's right. Because I had to select it, it replaced it. I just undid it. I'm gonna unselect that and click insert so that I will insert a brand new uh, mass image. There's, you go. And now if I put them side by side, you see that there's a gap here. So the reason why there's a gap is, is that um, it's the bounding box. So when I increase the size of the image, uh, it accounted for that image uh, size. And so this is the actual image size that when I increased it, increased the size, it also increased the bounding box. And that's the reason why we're getting this extra space. Uh, so that's something that we're going to have to fix and uh, you know we'll be fixing it and hopefully by the next release we'll have that result. And the last is uh, the, the uh, Unsplash uh, API. So I was unaware of this. Uh, I discovered this while you know dog fooding and creating uh, you know my presentation. I was doing uh, uh, searches like I don't know uh, factories, factory or whatever the case may be and I was you know trying out different things and at a, a certain point, it gave me uh, nothing. It just said loading. And I thought that was a bug. Uh, and then when we uh, investigated it, we found out, no, 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 it's not a bug. Essentially, we had hit our limit of 50 searches or requests per hour. Uh, and so I did not do 50 searches. That must have meant that there was someone else, another user that was also doing searches. And uh, us combined had hit 50 uh, API calls. So it's not necessarily a bug, but I would say it is a bug in that it's not functioning as expected. 
so that's something that we're going to have to tackle in uh, 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 doing all the various requirements uh, that uh, Unsplash needs in order for us to uh, switch from the free API to uh, more of the uh, published uh, API, which would allow us, I think, something like 5,000 or 10,000 calls per hour, which should then allow uh, us from, you know, uh, preventing that from happening again. So, oh yeah, that's everything. Uh, thanks for everyone. This was a pretty long update and I will talk to you next week. Have a great week. Okay, have a good one. Bye and bye.